Can we make the Win 3921 16 inch scroll saw better? Let's try. Hey guys, the last video I posted uh, was about this Win 3921 scroll saw. And it's an entry level scroll saw, and basically we just wanted to take a look at it and see if it's a saw that for somewhere around $100 to $120 if it'll get the job done. So in the last video I showed you kind of the pros and cons of the tool and some of the things that were a little more difficult and, and uh, uh, to do than maybe some of the more expensive scroll saws. And one of the things we talked about were using plain end blades and having to use these little adapter clamps that hang over uh, these uh, arms up here to put the plain end clamps in. And they're a little bit of a nuisance to work with. So I noticed on the WIN site, uh, actually a, one of the, a reader sent me the uh, link to this, that for the WIN 3920, which is the saw that this 3921 replaced, they had a set of clamps that were specifically for uh, plain end blades. And I wasn't sure they were going to fit, but I go, went ahead and ordered them just to find out. So I've put them on, they do fit, let me show you how they work. Let's take a quick look at the original design before the upgrade. Uh, and again, you want to go back and watch the other video. I'll put a link in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube uh, to see how this works. But basically, it comes standard set up to be used as a pin end blade uh, scroll saw. But they give you these little adapters uh, that you can put the blades in. Then you hook them over this arm and you're able to use the plain end blades. Again, it's inconvenient, especially on the bottom, it's hard to get these things in and out. So I ordered these adapter kits and I'll put the link to these in the description below. And they're very simple, they replace these pieces right here and they just have a set screw and they clamp against the blade. Uh, so let's put them on uh, and uh, I'll show you how they work. You will need a three millimeter Allen wrench and I've already got the clamp on the bottom one and I didn't want to uh, didn't want to go and do that on camera because it's a little bit harder to get to. You'll need a short three millimeter Allen wrench to get the bottom one off. Uh, there's not a whole lot of room so make sure you take the left side panel off before you replace it. But it's really simple. You just remove this one screw, take the upper arm off, and then we just use the same screw to put this head on. And you want to make sure that when you do this that you've got the little J hook on the bottom like it is right here. Put the screw in the hole towards the back of the new clamp. Pull it forward and try to get it as straight as you possibly can. You, you don't want this in there at an angle. And they don't have any locating pins so you just have to be careful. Now again, this clamp uh, does not specifically say that it's for the 3921. Uh, so I just ordered it, put it on here to see if it would work. Uh, I'm going to get in here a little closer and show you how to take the blade on and off with these new clamps. But anyway, that's all there is to putting the new clamp on. You can see it's just one screw. Uh, replace the unit that's there and do the same on the bottom. We're looking straight down onto the table of the scroll saw. This is the blade plate. Uh, this is the upper clamp that we just installed. When we remove this plate, you can see that the lower clamp is down here. Now, I recommend that you get yourself a T-handled Allen wrench to make this job easier. Um, hopefully, I can find a M416 screw uh, that has a, uh, a knob on it, and we can replace this screw with a knob, and that would really be handy. But in the meantime, you're going to need an Allen wrench to change your blades. Okay, the first thing we want to do is show how to install a new blade. And to do that, we're just going to take our blade, find the direction that's down, and I'm going to install it into the bottom clamp first. I think on this, uh, this saw, this will be the easiest way to do this. So with this clamp loosened, just put the blade into the bottom clamp, maybe, I don't know, three or four millimeters deep. Uh, the deeper you put it, the better it'll clamp, but also the more you'll have to loosen the tension to get the upper blade to go in its clamp. And so I put that in the lower clamp and I've tightened it down. 
Now we've got the blade in there. Now with the back clamp unclamped, we can push down on this arm and put the blade into the top. So we can take this, slide it in there to where it's basically 90 degrees to the table, clamp it down. We can apply our tension, set our tension, put our plate back on, and we're ready to start cutting. So definitely easier than using these uh, adapters that came with the saw. I can't, again, I can't tell you if there's any uh, differences uh, as far as the way the operation is. I haven't seen any yet, but I've only been playing with it here for about an hour or so. But it looks like it works fine. So now let's talk about when you're going along and cutting and you want to move to a new entry hole. We've got the modifications on the upper and lower arms, uh, ready to do a test to see how easy it is to move from one entry hole to the next. So, got the blade in, I've got a tension, I'm going to do a cut. We've completed our first interior cut, now we want to move the blade to the next entry hole. I'm going to reach into the back and release the tension. Take my T-handled Allen wrench, release the blade from the clamp, place the blade through the next entry hole, and clamp the blade back into the upper clamp. Now here's one thing that you do have to be kind of careful of. When you release the tension in the back, you want to turn it counterclockwise to give it a, 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 some room to where when you put this blade back in, it's not under too much tension. So I've got it clamped down, and now I'm just going to turn the tension back up. So it's not quite as quick release as it would be on some of the newer saws. But it is a lot more convenient than the adapter clamps that came with the saw. So again, I'll put the part number to these uh, pieces in the description below. Let's talk about the quality of the clamps themselves. Um, I will be surprised if these don't wear out fairly quickly. Uh, you want the blade to be in there pretty tight, so you're going to tend to snug this down a little bit. And I'm not sure how long it'll take these blades to create a groove into these uh, clamps. So this may be uh, an item that you have to replace, you know, on a somewhat frequent basis. Uh, but that's not that unusual. We have to do that on the higher end saws too. So uh, not the end of the world. But you may want to order two sets of these. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, you do want to make sure that you've got the upper and lower uh, assembly straight. You don't want this one to be twisted this way and the one on the bottom to be twisted that way. You're just putting stress on the blade. So do take a little care to make sure when you get this one screw in here that you've got this thing straight and parallel with the arm. Uh, other than that, I'll use it here for a few days, see how it works out, see if we have any blade slipping problem. Again, the, the biggest problem I've seen so far is that when you loosen the handle in the back to get rid of the tension, and then you take this out, if you don't put the blade back in there at exactly the same spot again, when you go to clamp it down, you may have too much tension and it will pull the blade out of the clamp. So, but other than that, everything seems to be working pretty well. I'm Steve Good. Thanks for being here with me at Scroll Saw Workshop. Catch you next time.